Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Welcome to the Mind Your Farm Business podcast brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm Sean Haney, founder of realagriculture.com and host of Real Ag Radio on Rural Radio 147 Sirius XM. You can find more episodes of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast by going to mindyourfarmbusiness.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Today, we're going to dive into the numbers around the costing of your equipment and your operation. Oh, now, hold on. Before you fall asleep, I want to tell you that this is actually a very important topic as we try to better understand our operating costs as it applies to machinery. Here, here's the best part. You don't need to be a CFA to get serviceable numbers out of your operation. As our guest today mentions, there are ways to approach this topic based on your financial capabilities and resources. So our guest today is Peter Manis. He's a business advisor in MP's Farm Management Consulting Group. Working through Manitoba, Peter delivers management consulting services and helps implement solutions on a wide range of issues for primary agricultural producers, agricultural industry organizations, and producer groups, including Hutterite Colonies. With over 10 years of industry experience, Peter has firsthand knowledge of agricultural production. He understands the challenges the agricultural sector faces today and can quickly identify the opportunities. Looking forward to talking to Peter. He, he closely works with clients on a daily basis on topics just like this. So let's get to our conversation with Peter Manis of MMP about cost in your equipment. Peter, welcome to the Mind Your Farm Business Podcast. Hey, Sean, thanks for having me. Okay, today we're going to talk about, uh, I think, a pretty important topic when it comes to trying to sort out what you know, your equipment is is costing you from a number of different angles. When we look at analyzing the operational or the, some of the capital costs of equipment, I guess let's start with the why. Why is that important from a farm management standpoint? Start with the hard one from the start, I guess. Um, I think that it's important uh because it's a significant cost associated with your business. And, you know, probably other than, um, you know, your input costs, your, you know, fertilizer, chemical seed, uh, you know, the next big category of expenses is related to the operating cost of your business. So, you know, obviously um, depreciation or on your equipment, fuel repairs, you know, you lump those things all together in terms of what it's costing you to get your, your crop in and off. And that's a pretty significant, um, cost component of your business. Now, there's probably a lot of ways to to peel this banana, so to speak, but it, should, do you do that like on a cost per hour basis? Do you do it on a cost per acre basis? Do you like, how should, like, what is that cost per, what is it, what, how, how do we make that so it makes some sense? And we're looking at the right numbers because, you know, if we're looking at the wrong number, it's sort of like we're doing pointless analysis. Yeah, I I would say that, you know, most grain farms would budget, you know, initial budgets would be on a cost per acre basis. So, uh, and that would be more consistent than say like on a cost per hour, um, you know, where you might have fluctuations year to year in the hours that you're putting on equipment. So I think that cost per acre is a, is a pretty good place to start if you're, if you're looking at doing that analysis. Now, how do we start to put this together? Uh, Cause we, we have to have the right, you know, accurate, data otherwise you know the the output of course like in any sort of data analysis is is really useless um so is, is it just like yeah, how and, track of all this and i think that that's maybe where um people stop and start pretty quickly on this is that <laughs> looking for the right data and they're not quite sure and so then they go goes to the side of their desk and then we um we forget about it um i would say that there's probably three places um, to look, and all of them have kind of pros and cons with each of them. Um, the first, which is probably the gold standard, would be actually doing a fair market value analysis of your equipment on an annual basis, and then reviewing that, doing that every year, and then looking at what the actual depreciation has been on your equipment over the year. Um, I think that can be, is probably the most time consuming. And um, so, you know, farmers look at that and say, well, I don't have time to do that. So they're not going to do that. That's fine. 
Um, the second place that, that people would, would look would be looking at it based on their payments is that they would, whether it's a lease or a finance, they would just look at what they're spending on equipment and that becomes their equipment cost for the year. Um, you know, payments going out of the bank. That again is, it's okay, um, but most farms will have some equipment that they're not making payments on or how do we account for the equipment that you're making cash, you know, you're paying cash for? How do we, how do we assign a cost for that? Um, the third place, which, is where I like to start, obviously, because I work for an accounting firm, is to look at your financial statement and use the information that's that's on there. So um, the two places there to look would be um, looking at the, uh, it's called the net book value, um, but looking at the total value of your equipment and your automotive and equipment on your statement, uh, looking at that number on a per acre basis, and then looking at your uh, amortization. Um, with the asterisks that um, hoping that your your account that you're using is not using the CCA rates uh, or the, the CRA rates for depreciation because those, those are much more aggressive than what the actual um, depreciation would be on equipment. Okay. Uh, but those are those be kind of good places to start. Where do I put the operational cost of the equipment? So if okay, so I'm, I say I'm making a payment on a combine. And so I know that payment is costing me per year, yeah. but don't I, in that per acre cost, do I not have to put in like what the fuel is and maybe some repairs and maintenance and things like that? Yes. So um, again, if you're, the way that M&P does statements is we group your operational costs all together. Um, so then we would look at those things all, um, all as one. So obviously your depreciation or your amortization is one part of it. Your repairs are another, your fuel is another component, but what happens if you're, you don't own equipment and you're, you're um, using a bunch of custom work or uh, you're making lease payments and, or renting equipment. Um, and so we want to look at those all together. And so then the actual equipment cost or the cost of ownership is really only one part of that, hmm. one part of that overall operating cost puzzle. Yeah, because you can be kind of, you know, you, you can be kind of misled and, and data can be misleading, right? If you, if you don't consider all the things that you put into the, the formula, so to speak. So for example, I'm running 30, 40 year old combines. I have, okay. So my, my payments are zero. Um, and so my equipment cost is zero, but I'm having to pump a serious amount of you know, repairs and maintenance into that machine every year it's burning an obnoxious amount of fuel. Uh, there's, you know, there, there's caught, we, it'd be very easy if you just focus on the payments as your equipment cost to be misled yeah. on what that equipment is actually costing you. Absolutely. And I think too that um, even just, you know, profitability has been relatively good for most of the, gr the grain sector in Western Canada over the last five years. So we've got farms that are probably putting more cash into equipment purchases, or they're trying to fend off the high interest rate environment that we're in right now. Um, so they're using more cash to put in those um, to put in those those purchases, trying to keep their payments lower, which again is a like it's not a good way to look at your look at that analysis because you're not counting the fact, you know, the really the opportunity cost on the cash that you're putting into the that purchase. And you know, you and I were talking earlier. I think it's this is a good time to make an important point, and I get your comment on it. That it, it's similar to there, there's a wide pendulum here, okay, and and where you fit on the pendulum on either end, somewhere in the middle, it, it's not a good or bad. The the reality is is trying to improve on where you currently are on that pendulum. And, and so you the just, you know, to use as an example, you, you mentioned like the gold standard, which is like the, you know, this is the ideal way to, you know, if, if, if in the utopian perfect world, do you have fair market value, value of all your equipment every year? Well, if you aren't doing anything in this area, that's not the place to start probably. You're, you're, you're actually, you're, you're increasing the probability that you start and you give up. Is, is that, is that been your experience working with clients? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, I would, if I was talking to a client about where to start, the first place I probably look is on their financial statement and I would look at their amortization expense. That'd be the first place I would look. And I would look at the trend in that number. And if the trend in that number is going up, that means you're spending more every year on equipment than you're depreciating. So that's, which again, isn't a surprise in the way that equipment values are going, but that's a good, that would be a good kind of number to start with. Mm. If you're, yeah, looking yeah. for something. And I, you know, I, I know a farm that, you know, they do some tracking from the standpoint of uh, they have uh, meters on their they have fuel tanks on the farm. And so when they, when they fill up, they're actually tracking how many liters went into each, each piece of machinery mm-hmm. as, as you know, one way. So, and why they went that way is they felt they were being, and this is somebody on the, you know, the, they're, they're doing a lot in this area. So I don't want yeah. this to be, you know, create barriers for people, but what they felt they were tricked on is they were basically taking their total leaders bought in a year and just dividing it by the acres. But what they wanted to get into was, okay, is there, is there, is there some, is there some pieces of machinery that maybe are burning way more fuel because we're tracking on an individual basis, burning way more fuel than maybe we thought. Um, and what they also did was they looked at some of their semis. So they're hauling grain and they found out that actually some of the trucks were, were actually had way worse fuel mileage than some of the others. And, and so they were like, hey, we got to get rid of that truck. They're like, you know, we, we're going to gain, we're actually going to lower our cost if we upgrade that truck because it, it's, it, the fuel mileage is awful in that thing. So like, those are the kind of things that some farms are doing once again, not where I would start, but you know, once you get to sort of tracking the gross stuff and you feel comfortable with it, then you can get more into some of maybe more of the individual unit material and, and start tracking it that way. Is that it, what, what are you seeing in the, in the, in the field? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the, we often talk about the, the purchase component as like the event, but it, it really is just one small component of your overall, you know, equipment cost for your operation. Um, you know, there's all that other efficiency pieces and an analysis that you can do to try and improve your overall, if you're looking at it on a cost per acre, is improve your overall cost per acre without actually making any changes to the way that you procure equipment. Yeah. yeah well, good, good point that, that the, the output, you know, what, what some of your costs are from an equipment standpoint, especially on the operational side, it, it can factor in the decision-making on, you know, whether you need to upgrade to new upgrade to used instead of it just being sort of like these unwritten rules on like, you, you should trade, you should trade a four wheel drive tractor at a certain amount of hours. That's what everybody does. Or maybe the dealer told you or like stuff like that. You can actually do it from a, a true, like what's working or not working on my farm cost perspective. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it's easy to get into the mindset of, well, we just do what we've always done is, you know, we, you know, we buy combines with 500 hours and we run them for a thousand hours and then we sell them, you know, and, and without actually thinking about what the actual cost to your, your business is and whether that's the best, you know, is that the, the best option uh, providing with the best return or value out of the, out of the investment that you're making in them. Do you do you find when you you look at your 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 broad set of clients at MMP, you know, I, I would imagine like the, during the growing season, or if you're a rancher, you know, during calving, not the time to be crunching some of this stuff. There's certain probably I, I would imagine some clients are using certain periods of the year or certain weeks of the, of, of the month or, st- you know, stuff like that, that that's when they get in, cause it, it's sort of being in a mindset, right? Um, they, you know, when you're, we're talking about numbers, it requires some focus and it more of a quieter time in the year. Is that what you're finding when they, they space out some time for this? Yeah. Like we, like on the grain side, it's, it's, um, it's pretty easy to, to kind of, uh, to figure it out. It's either growing season or it's planting season. Um, you know, and that kind of generally flips over sometimes for most farms between October and November. Uh, so it's a good time to look at those, those numbers. Um, you know, when we're talking about equipment costs is that the, the change in those numbers is, is um, 
is not as immediate. If you're trying to deploy a different strategy, it's not as immediate as if you were buying fertilizer, you know, or changing your crops. And so you're changing what seed you're, you're purchasing, right? It, is it, it very much is more based on what trend you're on and then just trying to make some, some adjustments that, that might not um, change the way you're doing things immediately or change, sorry, it might change the way you're doing things immediately, but it might not change the cost significantly in the short term, but it, it maybe is going to change the, the trajectory that you're on um, from a cost perspective. And then you get kind of a compounding effect as you go. So really your biggest gain is five years from now, as opposed to, you know, the decision that you're making today. We'll get back to the Mind Your Farm Business podcast, but first a word from our sponsor, RBC Royal Bank. This episode of Mind Your Farm Business Podcast is brought to you by RBC. As an agricultural producer, you're putting a lot of thought into your operation every day. You probably have more than a couple of ideas on how to handle challenges like market fluctuations, unexpected weather, or simply weighing the pros and cons of adopting new technology. But knowing where to start, that's where a solid risk management strategy can help. Visit rbc.com slash risk management to learn more. Uh, good, good point. If you're looking for instant rewards, now you, you may find some low hanging fruit. There may be something where it's like, you know, I personally in my own business, we, we kind of had that experience. We, we were looking at some of our costs and how we were doing some things. And, and we had always looked at them through like a certain angle. And all it took was a conversation with a friend. And I was kind of frustrated and I was talking about some of it. And they just sort of shifted the, the lens at the angle at which I was looking at some of those costs. And it created a chain reaction of a sort of a strategic shift in the way that we were handling, you know, and managing some of those costs and, and trying to be more efficient in the spending of some of those costs. So, you know, I, I think that, that that's an important thing is it, it, it is, it's a little bit more, and uh, that there was some low hanging fruit there, but it's also created that slower burn, like you mentioned, where we're hoping, you know, three, four, five years out, that, that that's where the real change happened. Now that, but that takes patience and that takes commitment too. And I think too, it also takes the, um, the discipline to go back and evaluate whether your decision's giving you the results that you expected. Um, I think that there's a lot of decisions that farmers made, especially around equipment that they're expecting, especially from an efficiency standpoint, right? You know, this, we're going to buy this and it's going to pay for itself because we're going to get these efficiency gains out of it. You know, but they don't actually go back and evaluate whether it's doing the things that they're expecting it to do. Are they getting the returns or improvements in efficiency that they expected, you know, when they made that investment? Yeah, fair, fair point. Sort of like you, you, buy, you buy a new truck and it says it gets a certain amount of mileage per, per liter or you know, kilometers per liter or whatever. <laughs> Mixing up imperial and metric there. But um, you, you see the fuel mileage. Yeah. The sticker says X, but then yeah. you look at the monitor. I'm not getting anywhere near that kind of a good comparison yeah. okay now where where are the potholes here what what do we want to what do we want to avoid uh so you know a lot in the audience depending on where you are on the pendulum you maybe haven't started maybe you've got lots of experience in this but uh for the most part what are some of those potholes that we're trying to avoid so that we don't get frustrated and we don't sort of just say you know what I'm I'm not I'm not doing this. That's a tough that's a tough one. I, I would say um probably the first one would be don't get bogged down in terms of how you how you own it or how you're paying for it or how you're financing it. That's probably the would be the first one. You know, am I leasing it or am I buying it? It it doesn't make you know it doesn't make that big of a difference. The whole other discussion about the tax component, but from a budgeting and planning standpoint, is that you're really just looking at, you know, what am I purchasing? What am I expecting the cost is going to be for this this unit on a, um, you know, on an annual basis for my farm? Um, the second thing I would say is that is this is the belief that we'll just keep pushing things, you know, that we can just keep pushing things back in our budget. Um, so if I don't buy anything this year, then I'm actually, I'm better off and you might be better off, but you also might just be creating a snowball down the road. Um, and so I, I talk about the, the, um, 
with clients about the big five um, and really thinking about what, um, you know, thinking about the life cycle of those pieces of equipment on your farm. So that would be um, combines, air seeder, uh, sprayer, and primary and secondary tractor. Those would be kind of the big, the big five is just run those out and say, how long or what's the life cycle of those on your farm and how do they kind of fit in and make sure that you're not, you know, backing everything up into kind of one, um, you know, one big snowball that eventually is going to, is going to cost you in the long run. You know, it's, it's interesting how so much of this, so much of this topic fits into the operational budget. It fits into the capital budget. You know, it, 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 it has a lot of different tentacles that it, that it works itself out to. And the, the more, the more accurate or the more comfortable we are with the accuracy of the numbers that we're looking at, it should raise the probability that we're making better decisions when it comes to that operational budget or that capital budget. That, that, that to me, that, that seems a little bit more clear than when we started here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's why it, it, it just is a little more difficult for, for farmers to get their head wrapped around because it has so many tentacles to it. You know, if we're, if we're looking at, a, you know, say an air seeder upgrade to, you know, to include sectional control as an example, um, you know, we're expecting that, you know, there might be some efficiency from a size perspective. So how do we kind of plan for that? Um, we're expecting some savings in our production expenses because, you know, we've got sectional control, we're gonna reduce overlap. Um, but then also how we finance it and the interest rate that we take on and, and what the cost of that then flows down into our overhead and our interest cost. Um, and that, and we haven't even talked about, you know, some of those things that you, those um, other pieces is that we, you know, like about fuel and is it gonna be harder to pull and, and what's that cost? You know, how is it gonna impact our repairs? You know, is it gonna have, you know, more or less, you know, wear and tear on an annual basis? And, and so it, it can get, it can be kind of overwhelming, get overwhelming very quickly. And, but the, the default isn't, well, we'll just, we won't worry about it and it'll work out. And then we just won't deal with it or talk about it or won't actually do the analysis to kind of follow through to say whether it's a good decision or not. Yeah. You know, I think, I, I always think that sometimes emulation is a good way to kind of get you started. So there's a, there, I have a couple thoughts there. One is, um, or maybe there's there's three and hopefully I said three and hopefully I don't forget what the three are, but you you know work with your you know I, I, I'm gonna throw the pitch out here, but you know th work with your accounting firm, get your account to help you. That that's that's you know if if you feel like you know this is just not my thing, you know, you got somebody that likes numbers, get them to help you. You know bring in the, the assistant. So there's there's that. There's also talk. You know there's also that thing about you know the you're about the 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 you're you're kind of like the five people that you associate yourself with you know talk to some of the farmers that you feel are doing a good job here ask them some questions get get some peer help um you know th th that that's a good i i i think that's a great thing to do and the the third in in this area that comes to mind is and this is something that i do a lot how is somebody that deals with the same issue, how are they doing it in another industry? So, you know, I just, I'll, you know, and this, this is like one of those gold standards, but how does the airline industry look at their, their cost of equipment? And in the case, you think the combine's expensive, just try to buy a Dreamliner. But, you know, so from a, from a capital standpoint, but also from an operational cost per uh you know per flight hour however they do it they just do some reading in that area and there's probably some things you can not all of it it's like it doesn't all transfer but you, you, there's probably some things you can pick up where it's like oh I, I that's actually an interesting thought i've actually never thought about my equipment that way that actually is a good way to do it like i, I think that's that that i i find that's always a, a, a great practice do, do you agree with that or what are your thoughts yeah i i would agree 100 percent um 
I think that we, you know, in the farming community think that we're incredibly unique and that there's no other, you know, no other industries face the challenges that, that we do, right? But I, I think it's, you know, whatever the issue is, I think that we can go and look and find that there are a lot of similarities. Um, I think a lot about, you know, maybe a lot of farmers don't know um, many equipment procurers in the airline industry, um, but we probably all know people in the construction business. Oh and, yeah, good point. Oil fields, um, yeah. In the oil, you know, in the oil field business or the oil field service business. Um, and just, you know, they're fighting the same fights that farmers are, right? In terms of, you know, how are you dealing with with death in your equipment? And, you know, how does that impact your procurement strategy? Um, you know, would you, how are you dealing with the inflationary, you know, the way that the cost of equipment has gone up? How does that, you know, fit into your your budgets and plans? And does it change your strategy in terms of how you buy stuff? And, you know, when you're doing your, your operational budget for, you know, okay, so you, you could do it for the whole farm. But I think a lot of people, what they do is like, here's my operational budget for the canola versus wheat. Like, you know, your, your, your herbicide program is going to be different for each of those crops. Uh, in some cases, maybe you got irrigation on some and you got dry land on, on others. So there's all those different variables. Um, and and you know, when it comes to the operational cost of your equipment, that that can be different too across some of the different crops that you 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 are growing. It's you know it's interesting. I was asking a farmer uh, this week. You know, diesel is expensive. Okay, so what are some of the things that you're doing on your farm to try to minimize use as much as possible from a from a cost standpoint? And and you know his right away answer was, it went right to honestly the biggest change was when we went no till, right? Not having to to drag those shovels through the through the ground we went to no-till that sprayer pass does not cost me as much from a fuel standpoint as as hauling around a cultivator um no no-till really was a and i, I was like that's a really good one I, I never actually thought about it that way and there again it's an agronomic practice mm -hmm. that real that changes the operational cost of some of that equipment on a year or a yearly basis so like i said again there's lots of different ways to look at it from different angles yeah, and, and I think that we get, you know, we get caught in the, um, you know, the, this idea that we always, we, like, we can't do anything different, right? You know, that, that we, we have to do it the way that we've always done it, and that's the only way that we can do it. Um, and it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but that but also being said is that don't, like, I would say to clients, don't get bogged down and, like, don't worry about that yet, right? If you're, if you're looking for the next thing or the next, you know, evaluation component and start to look at the, you know, your, your individual tractors and, you know, how their fuel consumption is in terms of what you're doing, like that's, that's amazing, but we're getting into the thin edge of the wedge on that, you know? Um, so it's, if, if the start is just from a procurement standpoint, is just, you know, sitting down and writing out your, you know, your kind of two, five year plan in terms of equipment replacement component and and how the cost your estimated cost of that upgrade is going to play into your cost that's that's step one so let's get let's get that out of the way start carrying that around in a folded up piece of paper in your wallet and and starting having those conversations with with your you know with your accountant or with your banker or with um you know your peer group is hey this is on my list what's on your list or right like just a very small change um in what you're doing is just you're going to get different conversations and automatically different feedback, you know, than just you know showing up and complaining about the cost of new equipment. Yeah, great, great point, Peter. Peter, thanks so much for joining us here this uh, episode of the Mind Your Farm Business Podcast. Much appreciated. We'll chat with you again soon. Okay, thanks, Sean. As Peter Manis talks about, many people try and get started in costing equipment and, and set the bar, quite frankly, way too high. They, they fade fast. It's kind of like that New Year's resolution to lose weight, right? We've done this ourselves, or you know somebody that's done it. You buy a gym pass, and then you go nuts for two weeks, <laughs> hardcore, without easing into the routine. And this leads to injuries, building, you kind of lack building back the passion. And soon by the time March rolls around after this New Year's resolution, you, you're barely, you're not even, you've skipped two weeks. You're not even going to the gym anymore right? Your goal was to go seven days a week and now you're not even going. And all of a sudden not going has become a total habit. You got to find your groove, 
Find the numbers that assist you in making more informed decisions on the farm. If you need assistance, get a professional to assist you. Delegating is not admitting defeat. It's actually just being a smart leader. If there's anything that Peter says that has you asking more questions or you have an opinion, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can send me an email, shaney at realagricultura.com. You can also, of course, call the Real Ag Feedback Line, 855-776-6147. You can find more episodes of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast at mindyourfarmbusiness.com. Thanks to RBC Royal Bank for being the sponsor. And until next time, keep on minding your farm business.